Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate basic design strips for an elevated two-way concrete slab in RAM concept. For this video, we will start the process for generating our design strips by reviewing some basic information for our sample model and by entering the span segment properties. Now here you can see in RAM concept, we've already created a very basic two-way concrete slab. I have the mesh input plan already open. Now within the layers menu, you're gonna notice that different objects in RAM concept are placed on different layers. To access the design strip plans, you're gonna to go to your design strip layers where you can enter the design spans for both the latitude and longitude direction. What you're gonna notice is that this particular model does not yet contain any design spans. A finite element analysis often produces high peak moments and stress concentrations, which are inappropriate for the calculation of reinforcement and evaluating performance. Code rules are generally intended for strip methods that assume an averaging or smearing of moments and shear across a designated width, such as a column strip. RAM concept uses design strips and design sections to link the finite element analysis with concrete code rules and concrete design. Now design strips are perhaps the most important tool within RAM concept. It is highly recommended that you take the time to fully understand what a design strip does and how to use them. Now before we create any design strips in this particular model, let's take a look at a few of the other layers. In the layers menu, I will now go to the finite element standard plan. Now here you can see that the finite element mesh has already been generated. Without design strips in the model, the mesh would appear to be more of a random configuration. In addition to that, if at this point we were to perform a calculation on this system, we would notice that design results are not available. That's because the program doesn't have enough information to be able to establish the code rules and the methods and preferences that you have for your design. If we were to take a look at that, we can go to the layers menu, go to the design status plans, and we would see that this information is empty. In addition to that, we can go to the reinforcement plans and see that no reinforcement was yet established. And again, the reason for that is because we do need to create design spans and design strips for the design process within RAM concept. So let's go ahead and get started. And your first step in your workflow would typically to enter your design span properties. I'm going to start in the latitude direction for my particular model. Now, when any of your design span plans are open, you're gonna notice a layer specific toolbar is now available over at the right hand side of your screen. This toolbar contains all of the different types of objects and properties that can be assigned to those objects for these particular layers. I'm going to enter my design span properties. Now, whenever you're entering the properties for a particular type of object within RAM concept, you're gonna notice that you can find that object in your layer specific toolbar and double click on it. This will allow you to enter the default span properties. Now the default span properties are separated into different categories for the general properties, strip generation, and information that can be specified for the column and middle strips and also live load reduction. Now for this particular video, we're going to quickly go through the span segment properties to enter the information that would be appropriate for the two-way slab. In another series of videos, we will go ahead and take a closer look at specific span segment properties that you might want to be aware of in order to ensure that you are setting up your design system properly. So let's go ahead and start with the general tab. I am working on the latitude 
direction and I will be eventually designing this as a traditional reinforced concrete slab. Considering that, I'm going to make sure that this checkbox is unselected. This is what I would use if I was going to ask the program to design a post tension system for me. Next, let's go to the strip generation tab. Here I can enter some span width information. I'm going to ask the program to calculate the span width automatically for me. And I'm going to tell the program that I'm working on just a basic code slab. Now, as you can see, we have other different column strip width configurations that you might use for other types of systems. You can also instruct the program whether or not you want to design the column strip for the column plus middle strip resultants. And you can either specify where your supports are or ask the program to detect them automatically. Next, let's move on to the column strip area. We're going to be using the slab rectangle cross-section trimming, and we can enter some reinforcement information. I'm going to ask the program to use number five bars for both the top and bottom, and I can enter my cover information. Of course, you're going to want to make sure that this corresponds with your code requirements. Next, I'm going to enter whether or not I have a design torsion system, and I'm going to specify the type of design system. For this model, we will be designing it as a two-way slab. Next, we can enter the middle strip properties. Now you can specify the middle strip information separately from the column strip, or you can ask the program to just use the column strip properties. This means that this tab will inherit all of the information that you entered in the column strip tab. Lastly, we can go to the live load reduction area and enter this information. Once we are done entering our default span properties, we can click OK. And now we are ready to start modeling our design spans. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.